It's time to finally talk rates. Welcome back to Coffee Gachas. And in this video, I am going to talk about rates and their lineups that you can potentially build to achieve triple S rating. Of course, this video is not for everyone, but I do know that a lot of people like me similarly is very concerned with getting the highest ranking in rates because after all, right, this game to day one players is extremely easy and there is no challenge. Hence, we are really looking forward to 1.4 bringing that challenge and potentially really have to team build correctly so that you are able to obtain triple S, right? So first, I'm going to talk about the Sea Serpent Raid. And the Sea Serpent Raid is what I would consider the most difficult raid till date out of all four of the raids that we have. And the reason for that is multiple fold. So first, I want to talk on a general raid mechanic and that is the HP bar. So if you can see on your screen, right, there is a HP bar that constantly goes down and then it changes color, go to another one. And this HP bar right doesn't just indicate the HP levels it also indicates what kind of damage reduction you are going to face for that particular HP bar so for the later HP bars of course you're going to face more and more damage reduction and if you think about this right damage increase damage dealt increase is very important to compensate for that oftentimes we say that damage dealt increase is not the best uh, multiplier because it is suffering from a lot of the diminishing returns given that there are a lot of sources of it right in this game everything is multiplicative so the more you have of it the more diminishing returns you are going to have and for sea serpent rig itself you have barely any sources of damage dealt increase except for star factors so there isn't really anything you can consider damage dealt increase bonuses compared to the other bosses whereby potentially if you use ultimate you're going to get 30 percent increase here if you do this you're going to get 20 percent increase so the boost itself make the rate easier so if you think of difficult rates usually they are the ones with less of this uh, lines of bonuses and also why necrologists as well as pickles are good because of the fact that they increase a lot of this damage dealt to compensate for this deficit now with that basic result out of the way you also have to look at sea serpent rate as a rate that requires a lot of sustainability so the only thing we can kind of rely on is the 75 percent increase in genesis damage taken for the boss so you can see right with 37 coming up for this she is going to be highly favored for this rate for the reasons I've mentioned Genesis damage as well as lack of damage that increase and also star factors favored. So all of these factors combined, we are going to have a very strict lineup that you can potentially get SSS with if you are at P0. Of course, if you are higher portrays, you can get it very easily. The first one is the meta lineup, which is the C37, Lilia, Voyager, as well as two fairies. So this lineup itself, right? First thing you can notice, everyone is star factors. And second thing you can notice is that there is a lot of damage as well as sustain with 37 in the focus of it so with this lineup 37 is the main dps dealer with her genesis damage that is being increased by 75 percent and lilia is the support for her while also dealing decent damage i wouldn't exactly say lilia in this role is like a massive damage dealer in fact if you were to replace lilia with regulars you will get more damage but since we are trying to boost 37 as much as possible lilia is the support here you can also use new babel but the fact is that uh, this meta team right Lilia does outweigh like New Babel. We are trying to say Lilia is not that good, but Lilia is definitely still better than New Babel in this case, since the boss also don't really get affected by Taunt. And then the second thing is the Voyager as well as the Two Fairy. So both of this right provide in terms of sustainability, sturdiness as well as very good heals when it comes to Two Fairy and also. Uh, Two Fairy has the AP Generous factor that we already mentioned about and given the fact that there is a boss and two other units, if you kill off the two other units, right, the boss will uh, get Genesis damage equals to uh, the max HP for that HP bar. So that is also something very, very notable when it comes to later ends whereby killing off the units might be very beneficial. Hence, applying a team-wide debuff or enemy-wide debuff is very good while it is also AP generous. Voyager also comes in clutch with her Reflect which is the interstellar blessing with Genesis damage. So like I mentioned, right, everything revolves around Genesis damage. That's why this is the meta team. Now of course when it comes to alternatives and replacements, I'm not just going to show you guys one meta lineup. Of course I've prepared other lineups. I've also seen one lineup which is what you see on the screen. 37, 6 regulars as well as 2 fairies. So you can see that two of the units have been replaced for as well as Lilia. When it comes to replacement priority, when you guys want to put in other units, right? I would say that Lilia is the first one to go. She is the most worthless one when it comes to all four units. You can pretty much replace her with regulars. You can replace her with um, six as long as they bring about some sort of sustain or they bring about some sort of damage, you are fine to do so. 
Right, the second one is going to be Voyager. Voyager is less replaceable because Interstellar Blessing really brings a lot of damage and sturdiness does help a lot when it comes to sustainability. However, you can see that I would consider right the 6 over here, right, a massive boost to the amount of buffs you get on your team so their sustainability does increase. And similarly, Regulus also here also help with sustainability a bit when she outs. When she outs, right, you are actually immune to everything that is not ultimates. So you kind of can count her as a bit of like lowering damage input. Hence, the uh, pressure on TF to heal alone is not that uh, massive. Also, the third replaceable I would say is going to be 37 and then lastly TF. So 37 and TF pretty much non-replaceable. I haven't seen that much that replace TF while at the same time achieving like triple S with balloon party um, alternatives like this because TF really brings a lot. Also not to mention the frostbite stats that the boss actually inflicts is very very annoying. So you do need cleanse from TF which is why she is less replaceable from this end. So these are the two teams that I recommend for C Serpent Reed. Definitely the most difficult least replacement so if you want to really focus on reads i would suggest to go for 37 to really secure that triple s if you're not too concerned you just fine with ss maybe you can go with other alternatives for sure think about the alternatives priority of switching units that i've mentioned just now and then switch up units and plan accordingly for your own tips now moving on next we're gonna have our marsh creation rate and for the marsh creation rate i deem it to be second most difficult but also at the same time something to take note of is it only ran one time for 1.4 1.5 it has been phased out replaced with the exhibition boss however i do predict that sometime it might return in the future so definitely also have to take note of this rate so the reason why this is the second most difficult right is because from the sea serpent rate where we have nothing to work with no damage dealt increased sources for this one we do have a source which is 40 percent increase to uh dealing damage on the enemy if the boss do not have a counter factor so the boss will automatically trigger this counter on themselves right periodically so you would have to hit it away before you can uh, nuke the boss to get the additional 40 percent so still not exactly the easiest to do it uh, efficiently but quite notably 40% is better than zero and secondly another reason why this rate is difficult is because of the sustainability issues notably if the boss were to attack your units without them having shields or without them having the counter factor you are going to receive 20% more damage I'm not wrong so that is why the sustainability wise is a bit of a concern also the boss will periodically have the buffs um, from penetration rate to increase the DPS and also have a defensive buff so uh, DPS requirements are also relatively high so you do need to have strong signal target DPS uh, like the Black Dwarf or Melania. Uh, optimally, these two units would be great. And the reason why this stage is sort of doable, not as difficult as Serpent despite all of this is that the mechanic, stage mechanic also have something called the Dispel Mechanic whereby if you were to use a 2-star heal card, 2-star counter card or a 2-star buff card, it will naturally dispel the buffs that the boss have except for the counters. For counters, you would have to use pickles like I mentioned which can dispel every single thing. So pickles is the best pick. If you have necrologist, you can also dispel without having 2 star cards. So it is also fine um, given the fact that necrologist auto 2 star card can already dispel. So this is where the meta team first comes out right. The best meta team is going to be Black Dwarf for DPS, Balloon Party for like I mentioned the counter suspect, pickles for the dispel and also as a sub DPS deals quite good dps and at higher portraits i think can be uh carry for this team itself and lastly two fairy for additional sustain and also the debuff so that you can deal more damage so this team is optimal from that sense should be very easy to get triple s when you uh, have this team black dwarf doing black dwarf things right if you were to replace her with melania you can also do so i do believe that black dwarf is definitely the most optimal one given that she is mineral afflictors so with all of these things considered right having to sustain constantly, having to uh, fuse for 2 star cards so that you can dispel off the boss. It takes a lot of AP to do all this random stuff which makes the DPS requirements a bit harder to reach. Hence, that's why I consider this the second most difficult rate. Of course, when it comes to alternatives, like I mentioned, right, this has more alternatives compared to Sea Serpent because it's not as oppressive and not as restrictive. So, like I mentioned, Black Dwarf can be substituted for Melania. If you have Melania, good substitute for Black Dwarf. I think Black Dwarf will still over do more damage however Melania is already very very decent for this stage also and another notable replacement is going to be the Pickles Necrologist replacement if you don't have Pickles just go for Necrologist also works the same and also Necrologist helps with the dispel of the buffs doesn't dispel counter but also helps with the sustain especially in longer battles right in shorter battles her sustain aspect 
is not that reliable but given the fact that you cannot out that much and in uh, three man battles AP generous aspect of pickles will definitely win over necrologies but in longer battles right uh, the fact that you only use one fourth AP instead of one third AP per move is going to make it a bit better when it comes to the necrologist usability so necrologist stock is also quite high for rigs and the other replacement would be six I think six is also quite notable but uh, at the same time you have to think about the requirements for this stage right if you need additional sustain if you need uh, healing then two fairy is definitely the best choice but six over two fairy can still work for sure six does bring quite a bit of sustainability although not directly healing you can rely only on balloon party healing but uh, not as consistent for sure so these are some of the replacements if you are going for lower rank you can pretty much sub in other of the mineral choices like you can go with black dwarf and eternity as well but i don't think black dwarf eternity at low portraits is going to be able to get you that triple s so these are some of the requirements um, differences although mineral eternity is good but single target is premier to get triple s so this is the marsh creation rate now going to our third rate we are going to have the cave boss so this ugly boss cave boss over here right honestly very very easy i really don't think that it is that difficult and for k boss the reason why he is easy is because every time you use the ultimate right you're going to receive a team wide 30 percent damage increase which means right if you have to if you use four ultimates in a row you will get 30 percent and then 60 percent 90 percent 120 percent so you can see how this is so freaking uh insane when it comes to reducing the damage taken reductions that i mentioned is a huge thing that you have to watch out for when it comes to boss rate so effectively erase it plus give it a bit more of course you cannot sustain or maintain a hundred percent uptime all the time but at the same time this right does elevate a lot of the damage problems that you have when it comes to boss rate so very very easy and the first team which i consider to be absolutely meta although you don't really need meta for this one very easy it's going to be six 37 black dwarf as well as beacon and the reason why this team is good is because of their relevant roles first six right it's an intellect type so it means that the spirit type is being countered by intellect you can easily deal a lot of damage with six even at p0 like i mentioned at times right p0 is just a buffer but with that bonus damage 30 percent right you can pretty much say that he can transition to that uh, dps role in p0 state so that is the first thing six provides that and also not to mention right the boss requires you to have debuffs on him constantly so that uh, they do not do like increased penetration rate they do not do increased damage hence the uh, negative debuffs right that six brings about is very very helpful in that end just with him alone you can pretty much land like two or three debuffs already over time so very very insane second one is going to be black dwarf so for black dwarf itself i think that she can be easily replaceable with uh, melania but i've seen more people using black dwarf maybe because black dwarf is newer people want to play with new toys right so melania is not used as much over here black dwarf is the main target that is being used single target dps role not too much to speak about good follow-up attacks just mainly for dps over here nothing really too special next one is going to be the beacon so beacon here is to provide the debuffs like i mentioned maintaining debuffs on this unit is going to be great and also since this unit is a spirit type right having beacon is just fine because usually when you don't want to use beacon it's because the other units have the afflictors bonuses hence you want to use it to benefit them while also being a premier debuffer but beacon being the best debuffer i would consider definitely does have a role over here i also seen people use shaman in place of beacon which is also great especially if you use um six as well as uh, bd but Beacon herself also does a lot of single target DPS and at P0 I think Charmaine single target DPS is really not as good compared to uh, Beacon so people also prefer to use Beacon from that end and lastly we have two fairy honestly you just see all meta teams have two fairy and that is the reason why I say two fairy is so universal Limbo U2 uh, event boss Red. you can find her everywhere in meta teams because she is so freaking buster ap generous like i mentioned and crit heal although not the most significant still better than nothing so really really good already from that end so this is the meta team now of course like i mentioned right this team have a lot of replacements potentially can use a lot of variations given that it is so easy but there are also going to be a lowest budget right there i can show you guys and that is this meme team so this is a necrologist door as well as uh miss radio and also six so six is the main dps the rest of them are just memeing 
Although I would say that the necrologist combos with the suicide gang is really really decent for memeing purposes at this stage itself, right, this boss rate itself, the fact that it is also able to get triple S means that there are some reliability when it comes to the strength. But do not get me wrong, right, the fact is that you do not need to have this units. Uh, it's really just to showcase to you how low the bar is when it comes to this rate. So overall, very meme rate, very easy rate, a lot of replacements, mainly just have debuff DPS and use ultimate at the right time and you should be fine. Now moving on, we have our 1.5 rate, which is the exhibition. You guys should have recently seen him in the 1.1 event stage so he is Iverson the 1.1 event boss and this ranking itself right for the difficulty wise I would say it ranges from extremely difficult to extremely easy okay and the reason why is very simple because I know most people don't read the details okay they don't like to read the info if you don't read the info you are never going to get triple s on this stage I'm going to promise you that extremely difficult but if you just know how to read Okay, just learn how to read from now until 1.5. You are fine. You are going to have an easy time clearing this because this team has a lot of variations. Although I wouldn't say that it's the, exactly the easiest to get triple S, but it's extremely easy to get SS and S because this boss mechanic right, basically just requires you to alternate between the big bot and the Iverson guy. So just uh, hit the big bot so that he cannot attack and then next turn Iverson will be exposed and just go slam the boss itself and for this the meta team is basically a meta unit and that is Spartodia you just need to have Spartodia don't need team okay you if you have Spartodia easy clear the Spartodia you're seeing on the screen right now for this week is a P0 R10 okay just need P0 R10 with three other units these three other units right if you're wondering if they are i250 right all these characters no 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 all i1 okay not even i2 in fact the twin sleep over here as well as the horsey is only i1 level one okay no use at all don't need to care about dps the boss is not going to attack you as long as you know the mechanics every single turn you're able to clear and of course there is some dps requirement single target burst as well which is why stuff Spartodia is really good because if you are not able to burst down Iverson every alternate turn, you will potentially face some of the attacks coming away and hence the I1 level 1 cannot be sustained. But like I mentioned, if you have Spartodia, easy clear, easy SSS, the easiest one you can ever find. If you really want to have uh, easy SSS and you have never gotten SSS when you are in 1.4, uh, in the future potentially, right, you think that you are super casual, you don't know how to get SSS but you want to get it for once, just pull for Spartodia, you are going to be fine because Spartodia is totally catered for this boss and the rest of the units are just to boost Moxie so that she can alternate uh, the ultimate every single other round. So this is a Spartodia meta team. Now, of course, you might ask, hey, Koki, I don't want to draw for Spartodia. Okay, if you don't want Spartodia, also fine. Because this rate, like I mentioned, right, is relatively easy compared to other of the uh, rates. So for this one, I'm going to show you one of the lowest investment one, which is Sweetheart Carry. So you can use Sweetheart Carry with Beacon. Both of this, right, have single target DPS, which is very important in this rate. And also, you can have Necrologist as well as Balloon Party for the damage increase as well as a sustaining part. So, this is a basic 5-star team. Don't even need 6-star unit, you can get Triple S. But the fact is Sweetheart is something that not everyone wants to invest in. Although, you can see on the screen, right, Sweetheart skin is pretty nice. Pretty much transform her into a goddess. So, after that, right, a lot of people wanted to play Sweetheart. Uh, also very very reasonable I guess so for this one if you do not have sweetheart you can change it to Melania it will be slightly more difficult than using sweetheart and the reason why is because Melania is mental damage uh, user while this boss kind of favors reality damage uh, so definitely you want to use sweetheart over Melania but with Melania you can also get triple S not a problem at all so just to show you where the bar is um, to really really clear this one I've also seen people using like Jessica plant team to clear this one like i mentioned this is i think the only time i've seen uh, jessica get triple s so that is all four rates covered difficulty wise like i mentioned sea serpent into marsh into um the cave and then lastly exhibition i think exhibition might be ahead of cave if you have um if you don't really know the mechanics well but if you know the mechanics well i think the exhibition is much easier than cave so definitely these are my ratings for the four rates as well as the units that you can potentially use so that you can plan accordingly now, of course, right, if you are thinking of rates and you are thinking of pulling for units, you also want to know which future units am I rating for them are, not just for rates, but for general content as well. So definitely check out this video over here. I'll see you guys over there. This is Koki Gachas, signing off.